Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm glad you're here because I have a lot to say, although my mind in the moment is blank. I'm a rise up our motherfucking deep bizarre, and I would like to advise everybody to put motherfucking in your middle name and introduce yourself as such. I'm Christian motherfucking Delgado. Let's see how that goes, okay? And I'm an entertainer. First and foremost, I'm an entertainer, okay? Like, a lot of people you hear in music, they say they did this, they did that, they did that, they didn't do any of that, okay? Because they're, they're entertainment. I'm an entertainer, first and foremost. Secondly, I advise that you're an adult to watch my stuff, but I, there's no way I can enforce that. And for you to uh, make sure you follow the laws of the land that you live in. I don't advise you to break any laws, okay? It's very important. Having said all that, we can get started. If you're joining on Instagram, I see more and more numbers coming. What you need to do is click the link in my bio and come here on this side. The actual lecture is in Zoom. If you could make it, come on this side. So if you can't, I get it. But if you can, come on this side. Okay, let's get started. Let me get it started. I don't think you're human if you're watching me. I don't consider you human. I consider you trapped in a human experience, okay? Every single person watching me right now, even if you're gonna catch it on replay later, I have no doubt you're not human. And I have no doubt you're trapped inside a human experience. And you're trying to make sense out of this shit, just like I am. And it's a fucked up situation to be in. But, you can't be confused any longer about your own identity. Because if you thought you were, if you thought you were something you weren't, like you thought you were this Coke can, then you would protect the Coke can like it was you, but it's not you. Brother, shout out to you, sir. Welcome. We're not, we're not, well, what am I going to say? We're not human, okay? We are spirit. We are consciousness that can take on any shape and form. My dog also has consciousness, right? If you have a dog, it's conscious. It's an aware creature. It has a fucking soul. If you look into the eyes of a dog, he has a soul. <laughs> He said, Bob Proctor said it many years ago. Did Bob Proctor say, be the best, fuck the rest? Because I bet you didn't. <laughs> I love Bob Proctor. I watch him a lot. Okay, he's cool as fuck. We're not, we're not human. And, any, and not just Bob, Buddha would have told you that a long time ago. And previous to Buddha, they would have told you that, okay? And the trap is to, to misidentify the, get this, I'm about to tell you something important. To misidentify the emotions of the human as our emotions. They're not. I'm going to show you something in a minute. And to misidentify the thoughts of the human experience with ours. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Inside, you have a conflict. There's an internal battle taking place between every person and themselves. I know this. And what I do is I can use that to my advantage. You know, last night we were out. I went out last night. It's been a while since I've been out, actually, in San Jose. I went out. And... Um, my, my craft, my art is not this, what you're seeing. This is me lecturing. This is me teaching. But my actual craft, my, my abilities, like, you know, some people are great basketball players. Some people are great musicians. I'm incredible at playing people. I play people. I play their emotions. I play their minds. I play everything. They're like a puppet to me. On my body, there's about at least four tattoos that are, are a testament to this, uh, this ability that I have of, of controlling people. It's been my... It's been my, my dream, it was my mission in life, it was my superpower to be able to control people if I wanted to. I can, I can do it, it's, it's visible in my life. You don't have to believe me, but it's visible in my life. Let me teach you something about light, okay? You, you, you know there's light here on me right now, right? How do you know, because you can see me. Now there's less light. Now I'm gonna turn on the light, watch what happens, okay? Watch what happens. Now, you can't see the beams of light. The beam of light is invisible. If I take a spray bottle and I spray sh sh mist, then as the air, as the water molecules hit the light, 
particles, then we see for a moment the light beam, right? We see where the fuck it is. If it's like a, a, a dark room, let's say, and you uh, put a projector, you could see it, right? You can't see the light, but you know it's here because how it lights up me, right? Okay, very good. So you can't see when I control another human being or make them, well, you control them by giving them certain emotions and ideas, right? So you can't see when I give somebody an emotion. You can't see how I play emotions on them. You can't see how I move around the, the words in their heads or, or plant words in their heads or plant ideas in their heads. You can't see it, but you can see the manifestation, can't you? Don't I have five girlfriends? I do. They go, whoa, you did that to them? Yeah, absolutely. Fuck yeah. Just way better than you or anybody else does it. You're doing the same thing. You see that? Yeah. That's exactly what you do when you get with a woman. And that's exactly what she does when she gets with you. What she does is she manipulates your emotions and your thoughts to get with her. 100%. She's a stranger. She'll do everything she can so that she can have access to your fucking resources. Okay? Then she, and she should do that. And I praise her for that. And I encourage her to do better than that. Okay? I don't have a problem with that. Why? Because I'm not a pussy. Let's start there. I'm not a pussy and neither are you because this is IMC Nation. Now, someone's going to watch this video. I have haters that watch it, but just do it secretly. Or in the future, they're going to watch it. And that moment is going to be an important moment because they're going to be like, IMC Nation, what's that? They've never heard of it. IMC Nation, that's what it is, okay? Look it up. We're not pussies in any way, shape, or form. We could be black, white, yellow, orange. We could be a cat. We could be a dog. I could be a scorpion. I could be a snake. I could be an eagle. I could be a, a shark or even a sloth. If you find me as a fucking sloth, watch the fuck out. I'll be the first sloth that will become a carnivore. I don't give a fuck. I will hide on that fucking marsh like this. I'll have my claws where they're just like, like this. So that all I got to do is just snap the motherfucker like think. All right, think. And I will fucking kill something before I die. I'm going to change the slots. I would lecture those fuckers. I'd be like, have you looked around you? What happened to our ancestors? Everyone evolved and some flew, some got poisoned, some ran faster. What did our ancestors evolve to? The slowest, stinkiest animal on the planet? How the hell did evolution win in this fight? Does anybody ever, can you break this shit down for me? Is this... And this, is this what disproves evolution? Because if it's the survival of the fittest, how the fuck is the sloth still around? This thing has zero defense. You can't say it's camouflaged. Then it is the greatest camouflager that ever possibly could be. It's better than any chameleon because how does that fucking thing live? It doesn't even live like on the floor to camouflage. This thing has to go up a tree and in the middle of going up the tree, it, it gets picked off by eagles. And I think, I think and, and, uh, 10 ants could kill it if they really went after it. It can't even blink its eye fast enough. It's the, it's the weakest. I'm so pissed at this lot, you don't understand. I hate weakness and I love nature. But this fucking animal, I can't wrap my fucking wits around this fucking thing. Look, evolution says clearly, these species survived, and these things they have is their survival tactics, right? And they made it. How the fuck did the sloth make it? What is, don't, do they have one baby, or do they, put, they, they plant eggs, and there's like a million little sloths that run around? No, they have a fucking baby. And has anybody ever seen a sloth mate? I have it. You know I have to YouTube this shit right after this, right? I mean, how does that begin? Is it like, <laughs> you know, like, and then does he just pump so slow? Does she ride him so slow that you can't even tell her hitting on me? What are you doing, right? Sloth, man. They know how to conserve, wait, hold on. Someone has an answer here. They know how to conserve energy. Christian Delgado. How, what do they do with, what do you mean they don't know how to conserve energy? How is that equal? They lived through this predator 
jungle. There's no way. Fuck these slobs. I can't stand them, but I love them too because they're so sad. And I have a place in my heart for sad animals. And has anybody ever seen a happy sloth? Even when it eats fucking food, that thing's sad. It still looks like a sad old man. Like, right? Like, cheer up, buddy. I'll buy you anything you want. Like, I really want to make a sloth happy one day. I'll even adopt a sloth and teach him how to run. I don't know. I have to figure this thing out. This animal and a platypus trips me out. A platypus is just stupid. It can at least do shit. It's like four animals in one, but it's just like, it's just so ugly. I would never want to touch that thing. I don't even, maybe it's slimy. It looks like it would be slimy. Okay. So far off what I was going to talk about. <laughs> I'm happy, good. Consciousness could be any, any creature. It doesn't have to be human. Okay? I do a lot of walks these days. My thing is walking right now. I walk a lot. I'd rather walk than do what? Everything pretty much. So I walk. And I find myself in, in a little area where there's a dragonfly, there's a bee, there's the trees, and there's a bird. Those are the things I noticed, right? And for a moment, I looked around me. I was like, fuck, man. We're all viewing this moment differently. Like the bee, I don't know what the fuck the bee was experiencing, but you get it, there was a consciousness there that was surviving. And then there was a dragonfly. And there was me in the trees. And I was like, are they aware of me? Or do they not see? What, what do I look like to that fucking thing? The drag, is the dragonfly thing you watch out for that giant human? Or what? Like, am I, am I a smell? Am I a sound? Am I just a wind? Because I'm really aware of these fucking things. And something came to me. You see, it seems like being a human, I'm more aware of my environment. Now you go, well, how do you know? I don't know if a bee's aware or not. He, he doesn't act like it. He doesn't act like I exist. You get what I'm saying? I know right away they exist. So, but then they do act like you exist when they sting you. So that means they become aware of you at some point. So I could tell you based on that observation, humans are more aware. And I was like, how are we all in the same moment alive with a totally different experience? That's a trip. And then I thought, if I could understand what the bee and the dragonfly and the, <clears throat> and the tree and the bird, if I could in one moment view this moment through all of their perceptions, what would I know about now that I don't know about now? This moment of now, right? This moment of now. So I want to get into some shit with you that I would normally do maybe on a mentorship class, okay? Just to give you an idea of these programs, what the hell goes on in them. First of all, somebody messaged me the other day. It was a really funny message. She's like, I really don't want to say this to you. And I don't click messages a lot, but I, I had to click that. I was like, what are the fuck they're going to say to me? My first thought is they were like, you know, I fucked your girlfriend last night or something. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, I'm preparing, I'm prepping myself before I click and going through the girlfriends in my head. Like who's most likely to fuck behind me right now, right? I'm just being honest. Like that's, that's what happened to my head. Now, I don't know if any other guys have the same disease or not, but it's like, I'm like, uh, the message comes through. I see the beginning of the message and the beginning of the message says, I really don't want to tell you this. And I'm like, oh, fuck. All right, here we go. Prepare yourself. Click. And he was like, but I'm mad at you. And I'm like, okay, you sound gay now. What the fuck? Are you it's like, where, where are you going to go right after that? Then I don't even know if I want to keep reading after, especially when the mad at you is capitalized, right? But I'm mad at you. <laughs> okay, bro. And then basically it was like, look, he gives me this incredible compliment about my knowledge and my ability and this and that. And he's like, but you're only teaching men how to pick up women. Like you could do a lot more. People are counting on you. So I asked him a very, very important question. I said, are you on my mentorship class? And he said, no. I said, then how the fuck do you know what I'm teaching? Really, how the fuck do you know what I'm teaching? If you're going off my free lectures, that's fine. But you don't know what I'm teaching. This is not a teaching. It kind of is, but it's not even close to what the fuck I teach. You're right. I wouldn't just teach men how to pick up women. That's so small, okay? But it's so big at the same time. Because in order for a man to properly pick up a woman, he's going to have to become more and more and more a man. 
And we need men. We need men. <laughs> okay? We. Just us. Guys, fuck it for a second, girls. Step the fuck aside, girls. Let's talk to men. Men, we need some fucking men around us. Like, really. We're kind of alone out here. Okay? You want to be able to look to your right, look to your left, and at least, at least have one dude, one dude here. Like, one, one. At least just, just, just be three of us. Like a fucking triangle. Let's move forward. Why? I can count on you, bro. I can count on you, bro. You guys can count on me. And you all can count on each other. You got it? Good? Like, solid? Hundred for sure. You ain't gonna bitch out here. You ain't gonna bitch out there. I can count on you. You ain't doing. We're good, right? You're not gonna be a white knight. You're not gonna be a snitch. You're not gonna do this weird shit. Like suddenly, there's everybody good. It's difficult to find that. As men, we need men. To what? Just stand next to my shoulder, man. Why? Because it's a fucking jungle. Did you not see it? Were you looking? Or, or did you fall for this one? Hi, can I take your order? I don't know. You want to stab me afterwards? The fuck you're all angry at me for? Right? Oh, next in line. Oh, to, to do what? To do what? You're going to fucking execute me? Huh? You got a lot of anger towards me. What the fuck's wrong with you, lady? Can't even understand this shit anymore. Okay? No, but she's not even there. So we need men around us. But watch this. We also need other kind of men. Men, we need this kind of man. We need a man that I had named Manu Tupo, who mentored me. He taught me. He took his time, and he took a young man, and he showed him some laws of the universe and aesthetics and communication that makes me who I am today. Oh, there was another man. He was my dad. He still is at 76 years old. And that man took care of me, and he taught me discipline and hard work. He told me to be fucking honest and care for my family. And family comes first to him. And he showed me that. Cool. That was a good man to have. We need a man like that. What about Master Ernie Reyes? Grandmaster Ernie Reyes now. He took his time and took a young kid and taught him how to kick and punch and how to be a professional. And then there was another man named Mystery. And there was another man named uh, Matador. There was another man named uh, Batata. But men need men who came before them, who will grab the youngster and say, come here, got to teach you something. The other day we were driving. I don't know which girlfriend was. I think it was Hannah. And these, these young girls, I think it was, they, they were crossing the street too slow, right? And I saw cars stopping and, you know, like no one said anything to them because we're kind of in a ghetto area. Nobody wants to make trouble. They just want to get on with their fucking lives, right? And I was like, no, hell no. So I fucking rolled down the window. I said, hey. She looked at me, both of them. I said, don't do that shit. You're going to get yourself hurt. I go, that's not okay. I mean, out the window, right? And that's not okay. Be smart, okay? Don't, don't walk slow like that shit. Someone, someone might fucking hit you, okay? And then they were like, okay. Like, you could just see it. And then I rolled up the window and I went. And I said to Anna, I said, that's what you're supposed to do. I said, now look, I'm in a blacked out Maserati with a hot ass girl and I look like this in their hood. I'm somebody you should listen to, right? I wasn't some fucking uh, just bent out of shape Silicon Valley. I, you know, you gotta, you gotta be careful. No, I'm like that cool guy. I'm fucking your sister and your mom probably. Like, you know what I mean? And you in probably like three years, you'd be ripe to go. We're good, okay? Oh, you shouldn't say that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I should. Yeah, I should. I shouldn't do that, but I should say that. I should say whatever the fuck I want to fucking say, especially when I didn't say anything wrong. Did I say it? Did I say I'm going to do it now? No. I said in three fucking years. Am I supposed to like pretend like I'm not, three years doesn't come from now? I don't fucking know. Let me tell you something. If you haven't had a fucking child yet, in 18 years, that daughter of yours is mine. How's that? Okay? Is that that's like that, now it's like just like we're super not right. Right? Now I just went to spiritual, like, I grabbed that spirit. It's not even a fucking fetus. Like, no, oh, chill the fuck out, right? <laughs> you want the east side of San Jose? I was on the west side, actually. But it's, it's still a little ghetto area. It's a really super ghetto area here on the west side, too, right? I, I didn't realize that San Jose, San Jose had so many hoods in it. I, I had no idea. I had no idea, but I do. Because I grew up in it. You don't know. You don't know until you're, you're not in it. And then people talk about it. I went to... Um, I was a Jamba Juice or some shit, right? And I like to ask people, where are you from? And if they go, you know, from San Jose, whatever, say so how long, whatever, you know, I, I meet everybody, it's my town. 
So I go, um, well, the dude, I was like, where are you from? And he goes, uh, blah, blah, blah. I said, what, gra- what high school did you graduate from? And he goes, Del Mar. That's where I graduated from. I was like, oh, okay. How is it over there? I didn't say anything. I said, how is it over there? So, oh, you know, it's kind of like almost like a, um, what's that called? Private school now. I said, oh, really? I said, okay, cool. He's all, yeah, but I heard. He's all, I heard it was all gangs. <laughs> I said, really, when? And he's on the 90s. This is how we graduated in 94, right? I said, I graduated in 1994. He should have seen the way he looked at me. He was like, oh, was it true? I was like, yeah, it was true, but nobody was shooting anybody at all. Whoops. I said, nobody, not, not, not one person shot anybody when I was going over there. But there was a lot of fights over there. A lot of fights. But that's okay. Guys should be able to fight and, and go to class. <laughs> right? They shouldn't have to, but they should be able to. My phone is so hot, it's going to die. Let's see what I can do. How could I make this work? Try that. It's not bad. Okay. Well, anyways, let me not even talk about that. Um, you're not a human if you're watching me. You're having a human experience, please. Okay. And I would say over 90% of the problems you're having, because, <laughs> because how do I know? Because over 90% of the problems I'm having, that's how I know are because you're caught up in a human experience. And now here's where it gets really fucking interesting because now you're about to enter my head and see how the fuck I see this. Oh, you live in this area? Okay. That's how you know the Valencian shit. Uh, let, let me show you how this goes on, okay? I think somebody has designed and manufactured a human experience and sold it to you kind of sold it to the planet right they've like designed this experience and said this is what it means to be a good human i'll give you an example here's one to be a good human being you must go to college and graduate this is a manufactured idea this is not an idea that's true it's not a true idea it's a it's a made up it's a fucking lie it's like where'd you make that one up but it's so steeped into the world that, like, of course, but you know, it's changing now, of course, 2018. But think about it. Just think about for how many fucking years that was an idea. Here's another one. Here's another one that just blows my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain something to you. We're all humans in these bodies right now. I know we're not humans, but we are humans. You know, we're having a human experience. We're here, right? Here's what I want to tell you we can't have more than one religion. If they're, if they're arguing with each other, somebody's really wrong, okay? Like, it just, we got to be smart enough to go that d- there should be a better debate taking place, and we can't all just pretend that billions of people are not believing in something wrong. Like, what if, what if you just understood that it's just wrong? Wouldn't you feel so cheated if someone was cheating you for all these fucking years? There's billions of people that are claiming one religion, billions claiming another fucking religion. And most of us, especially if you're you're going, what the fuck? Well, I tell you what, what needs to happen is a live scientific debate with the fucking Pope and the fucking Dalai Lama and the fucking uh, whoever the fuck they are, different ones, right? And they sit there and they answer some basic questions about life. And the entire world should watch them and they each get five minutes for each answer. And we should all watch this thing. And then we should go, all right, which guy makes the most sense here? Okay, first let's start like this. Which guy is the craziest here? You, you're out of there, bro. Why? You're nuts. Because you haven't answered anything besides saying have faith, have faith, have faith. So that's not this debate. Get the fuck out. Anybody wants to have faith, go over there. We're trying to find the truth here. What else we got? Okay, then we get down to like the two guys that seem to have the best theories. And we go, now look, you can't both be right because you're disagreeing. One of you has to be right. Now, are you smart enough to know that your disagreement tells you one of you is wrong? Is, is that clear that one of you is wrong now? You both have to agree. I know you think it's the other guy, but can you agree that one of you is wrong out of two? Okay, now we're getting closer. You see, if they agree to that, they, they're getting closer to my mind. 
Yeah, okay. Well, you admit it? Okay, now here's what's fucking fascinating. That guy thinks you're wrong. You think that guy is wrong. Now, doesn't that tell you by, by just virtue of logic and mathematics that you guys should do a little bit more research and shit because this is not light. This is big. This is like talking about life and death and, and what you should live like and what's right and wrong. We're not going to take this shit lightly, okay? So either shut the fuck up do your fucking research by yourself. Or if you're going to say some shit, then be able to back it up with some shit that I can clearly see for myself. It's cool. All right? <clears throat> Simple. Once you start noticing what I said, you may realize what I realized. Wow, this world is not civilized. You cannot be civilized and have six or seven different religions. It's not possible. It means that your logic is wrong somewhere. <laughs> It just doesn't make sense. How could you all think that you all have a different God and it works? Like, bring your gods and have them fight each other then. I don't know. Put a wrestling match. Figure it the fuck out. But you, you can't do that. You can't do that. They accept that. Then you realize this. That the population... Okay, let, let me give you a question. Let me give you a question, right? Aliens, alien race, super advanced, comes to interact with Earth, okay? And what it does, it first observes the culture. My friends, pretend like you're, pretend like you're not human, because you're not, and you're coming to look at the culture, and you're about to interact with a human. And you listen, you look into the household that you're in, your own household, right? And somehow, because if you could go 1 million light years away to earth, you probably have the technology to do this because that could do it just looking at people. Imagine what they can do. You can look and be able to read the emotional state of people and their feelings. So they come in, you come in and you look into your own house and into yourself and the people around you. And you go, Burr. okay? And then you go next door, Burr. next door. Burr. And you do a little scan. Let me ask you a question. How would you approach an alien race who held your emotions and thoughts and had the communication level of your family and friends. Would you, would you come and be like, hey, I come in peace? You would be like, wait, there is not even peace amongst themselves. You and I are about to end up on an alien planet. We notice the aliens, but they, they look a little different than us, right? And we look close at them, and they're at war in their own family. Okay, hold on a second. You're about to enter a group of wolves, and the wolves are fighting each other, biting each other. You're, you're a stranger. You don't even smell like them. Okay? Take any animal. You're about to walk into a bunch of geese. There's flying ducks, whatever these things are. They're always at the parks. So they're super aggressive, right? And, they're, and you're about to walk in and they're fighting each other and they're their own family. And you see this shit happen constantly. Do you just walk into the stupid geese or the wolf or what if it's an alien race? You know what you would do? You would tiptoe out of there. And then you go and you look to see how they interact in their job. And you go, wow, they're worse here. They hate each other, even on another level. And then you see how they do it in groups and countries. And you go, those motherfuckers are not civilized. That's how you know the planet is not civilized. Because if you look from the outside, you would not want to engage with the inhabitants of this planet unless you had a real, real fucking strong gun in your hand and a force field. Because the people of this planet, they don't trust each other. Come on, man. You got to think with me. These are the thoughts in my head. The people of this planet, they don't trust each other. They don't trust their own mother, brother, sister. They don't trust their own daughters. And here comes an alien race, and you expect the motherfucker to approach friendly. First of all, they're very smart. Even a stupid person would know at this point to not fuck with humans. Not if you're not like, man, these motherfuckers fight themselves all the time. And then you see how the human race treats the other 
animals. And you go, ah, whoa, what the fuck? What are they doing? Oh, he's murdering everybody. Well, they have to eat. I know, but like, they're kind of heartless about the whole thing. They just, what do they do? Wait, so they, so if you're not human, you're on the food, you're on the food menu. If you're human, you can be killed, but they don't eat you because that's bad. But if you're not, now I'm not a, I'm not a vegetarian. I'm, I'm just stating the facts that from the outside, it looks savage when you eat meat. <laughs> Imagine me eating chicken right now, right? Imagine. And it looks normal, but like, and look, imagine what's actually happening. I'm tearing into the flesh of a dead creature that had a fucking life and made the mistake of coming across a human. <laughs> and you're an alien, <laughs> you come down here. Listen, it doesn't look safe. You know why? It's fucking not safe. It's not, that's why it doesn't look, you know why it doesn't look safe? Because it's not safe. <clears throat> and then you get into their mating rituals of humans, right? And you watch them. And you realize if there was going to be a Discovery Channel on it, which I'm sure they have, it would be like Discovery Channel. And the homo sapiens female cannot tell the truth. And then, and then they, they cut to a female. She's like, yes, we can. And it's like, and the dude says, exactly. <laughs> exactly can't tell the truth and then you'd pause it and you'd be like wait what are you come here come here alien number three check these humans out hold on the dudes they mate with her okay now listen to this i'm going to rewind this and the homo sapiens woman cannot tell the truth no do you think that's true how do they know how do they film that how do they film that part how they get the camera in the bedroom? You know, you always watch these nature shows. I'm like, how the fuck did they film that one? Right? They go deep in the burrow of a fucking thing. They watch it give birth. They watch it eat something. D doesn't that thing know there's like a camera inside that snaked it? How many days does a camera stay before the fucking little hamster, whatever is down there, gerbil, is like, that's fine. I'm just going to give birth and act normal. Does, does he sign a fucking waiver? Like, Come here, guys. You're going to act totally normal. Camera will be there. You're just going to live your life. Because these, I don't get how they get these shots. Right? And then inside the wolf's den, she does not let any other wolf near her cubs. Well, how the fuck did you get in there then? How did you get those shots? When she wasn't there, you snuck in, left the camera. Then she came home. Did you go in there and drug everybody? Pop, 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 pop. Everybody was asleep. You mounted some hidden cameras inside the wolf's den. Like, how the fuck are you getting these fucking shots from me? I don't know yet. Someone's got to know out there, but I don't know that. But anyways, come here, Alien 3. Can you believe that? No. You think, how do they, how do they get that shot? I don't know, dude. I don't know. Okay, so check this out. Okay, play, play. And the male, knowing this, decides to forget about it and pretend like it's never gonna happen to him. Like, what? No way. We're gonna go to these guys? We're gonna raid, them. what are we doing? Are we raiding them? Are we eating them? Are we enlightening them? Are we fucking, what, what the fuck are we doing on Earth with these people? Did you hear that shit? Said the woman can't tell the truth and it says the man knowing that will forget about it. Okay, let's play. He will commit his whole life to her and only her, wow, hold on. Click, what the fuck? Click. If she's beautiful, she will always have male suitors on the side, one phone call away. Click. Bro, this is getting good. Sit down. Alien 1237, come over here. This shit is crazy. These guys are fucks over there. Let's go. Click. The male produces billions and billions of sperm every day and is designed by nature to procreate with every female he sees, especially the hot ones. Whoa, that sounds good. Yeah. However, he decides to commit himself to one woman who will destroy. Well, hold on. What? <laughs> These guys are the stupidest things I've ever seen in my life. This can't be true. Play. And the female knows this deep inside. She also knows that she only wants to mate with ones who will violate that rule and mate with everybody else, but she pretends that's not true. Click. This is the most fucked up game I've ever seen. What the fuck are they doing? Let's see what happens to their kids. Do they have kids? I'm sure nature has worked out where they don't have kids anymore, right? Because there's no, what are, who's going to, they're going to bring a kid in the world with a female who lies and a guy who's so stupid, right? Oh, that's going to be a good combo. Let's see what the fuck happens with these guys. Click. 
click, play. The male slowly begins to wither away. As he, as he works and toils, he has a logical mind. She has an emotional, uh, whatever the fuck she is. Click, what does that mean? I don't know, play it. He thinks logically in straight lines. She can't do that, okay? It takes logic to survive, okay? But she gives advice and he takes it. Stop. Rewind that. I'm sure that's not what he said. Click. He is designed to solve problems, to create futures, to give advice. However, she is the one that creates the future with him, for him, gives advice, and tells him what to do. Click. Okay, dude. <laughs> this is fucked up. I feel for these people, right? Let's go. Look, I'm telling you, just looking at that, I mean, I could go on and it'll just, it'll be fun, but it'll, it's uh, too much at some point. We'd be like, wait, we can't, we can't go there and be okay. The, what kind of suit are we wearing? We need a fucking Iron Man suit to interact with these people. We got to be able to fly and take fucking missiles from them. Missiles. Speaking of missiles, watch this. I fast forwarded. it. They've created weapons that can destroy the whole planet. Stop. Okay. This is, they're very strong. Well, maybe that's why no one visits them because they'll shoot everybody down. Click. In their little planet, they've divided it up and they threatened to shoot each other with these weapons, knowing that if it lands, it'll destroy everybody else. Oh my God. Bro, you've got to be kidding me. What year are they in? 2018? Well, fuck that. Act like BC. I have a question. Why is it AD? It's after death. That's Jesus, right? Is that what that is? AD? It's after Jesus. The whole calendar of the world is, is on that now? I mean, on the Western side? How did, how, did, how, did, how did the fucking Catholic Church pull that off? I'm really fucking curious. That's like one of those things where you like you show up somewhere and uh, let's say Rolex as a company, you, you, you're somewhere where there should be no Rolex. Like you sit in a private jet or some shit and then they bring out the fucking champagne bottle and it's a Rolex fucking uh, champagne bottle popper. You go, what the fuck? Rolex makes one of these things? They have a, they have a, so I don't know how the calendar became after Jesus' death. Not just for Christians. I mean, goddamn, if you're a Muslim, these guys did good. You can't even, you should not agree to AD. That's not your calendar. These motherfuckers, they took it. They took it and I congratulate them. I, I tell you, I think if, if not the most powerful organization on earth, definitely one of two most powerful organizations on earth, right? I cannot hate on Christianity. I can never hate on that much power. I cannot, okay? I just won't follow its rules. I'm just saying. But I can't hate on anybody who, can, who could be... <clears throat> they tell me I brainwash people? What the fuck? Have you ever seen religious people? It's religious people that say, I, I brainwash people. That's the best part, right? Watch out for him. He brainwashes you. He, he worships the devil and eats kids. Whoa! Is that what your five-year-old mind still thinks? You, do you live in that world? What do you do? Do you, like, hit a red light and you go, fucking Satan. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Is there no more diseases in your house? Like, when someone sneezes, there's a spirit that entered their head and... Are you, are you the fucking, are you so superstitious now that everything, what the fuck? You're driving a bus for kids? You shouldn't operate heavy machinery with that stupidity in your head. The fuck is wrong with you using weird words like that? Don't throw words around like that. He's the devil. If there was a fucking devil and he showed up, I can only imagine the extent of that motherfucker. Right? Can you imagine? The fuck the devil would look like if he showed up? Fuck. I mean, that's a sight to behold. If you're going to die, die like that. That's what I want. Okay? I want to die like that. Fuck that. See some cool shit like, oh, fuck no. I got to put this on my IG. Hold on. Just, want, just don't kill me yet. Just come on, man. No one's going to believe this shit. I told you guys everything I did. Nobody would believe it. Come here, dude. Boom. Guess who? Yeah, the devil himself. I'm out. Okay, boom, I vanished. Get out of here, dog. They've packaged the human experience and they've given it to you and they sell it every day on TV. 
And then they took over the schools and they sell it in schools. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you something. I'm starting to bling out. If you could see, let me, let me just show Instagram first, right? I'm starting to bling out. Now you want to know something about it? I feel stupid blinging out. Yeah, no, I really, I really feel stupid blinging out. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm going in there like, oh, what's that diamond? What the fuck? How much is that? Give me the cheapest fucking one that looks the best. I don't give a fuck. Which one will look the blingiest with the least amount of... I don't care if it's a, a fucking 14 carat or 20 carat or fucking 30 uh, blue diamonds. I don't give a fuck. Here's this much money. Now, why am I doing it? You know why I'm doing it? Because I'm entering the music industry, right? Listen, I'm entering the music industry. And in that industry, everybody blings out. So why would you do it? Because I just want to show the motherfuckers that I got it before I entered the fucking game. How's that? Okay? Because I'm here to do some shit. And I want to show everybody I'm already a master at game. I'm arriving in your fucking industry. And I'm going to show you what a player really is. Okay? You guys talk about players? I'm going to show you what a player is. Talk about hustler? I'm going to show you what a fucking hustler is. You talk about all that shit? I'm going to show you what it really fucking is. You talk about being down? Talk about being down, motherfucker. I've been down since three years fucking old for the martial goddamn fucking arts. And if you ever want to know what that is, you better come around the way I did martial arts. Go ask any of my fucking teachers. They'll tell you. Uh, man, you talk about... Get out of here, right? This is... I've been all this my whole life. I've been a king my whole life. So now I'm going to enter an industry that everybody's talking about it. So when I'm getting this shit, I, I just want you to know, I'm not internally like... Like... Yeah. You know, it's not doing that shit. It's more like, oh, okay, that's cool. That's kind of nice, right? Hey, that's okay, okay. But you know what I really like about it? it? It allows me to wear sweats more. See that? Ah, damn. I can stretch. I'm a monk, right? So I'm walking around with fucking tennis shoes and sweats, and I'm like, okay, that's good. You see it? I got it? Good. We're good? Okay, let's, let's do a deal. <laughs> right, come on. So now let's do a deal. Let's do a song together. Why? Well, I got what you got. Right? Isn't that simple? You got this. We're good. Okay, good. But when I was in the in the martial arts world, it wouldn't be this. It'd be big fat fucking beads. I'd have Mongolian hair. Like a bunch of my tattoos were for fucking uh, fighting. Like, nah, you know, I still have a bunch of this shit already in me still, right? But basically, what I'm doing is I'm entering a culture as a persona, a mask. But I'm aware of it. Why? Because I'm not a human being in my mind. I'm having a human being experience, and I'm taking a look at their package experience. Like, oh, so that's what they do for, for rap. Let me look at this fucking thing. And I can decode it. I, uh, okay, so they need that. They need that, 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 that. Mm. Okay. Do you know why I'm getting these fucking rings? Well, I'll tell you worldwide now. My girlfriends know about it. I showed up at this fucking event, right? And it was a bunch of fucking... It was the first event I went to that, like, you know, like, like high-level rappers in the Bay Area. And... I didn't know anybody. I knew like one person who invited me, but he was the OG of the whole place. So it was all good in that way. But people had been watching me on Instagram and this and that. And so I got recognized. I like that. I recognize a lot of them. I'm a fan of a lot of them, honestly, in, in that kind of way. And then um, what do guys do? You know what we do? We measure ourselves against other guys, just so you know, okay? Like every guy measures himself against another guy. He could act like he's not doing it. By the way, girls, if your guy isn't doing that, get rid of him. Get rid of him because he's lost too many times. That's why he's not doing it. Okay. Now, unless, unless he's not doing it the way a lion wouldn't measure himself against a jackal, but you will know the difference. Don't let him, don't, don't let him pretend it's that when it's not that, because when it's, when it's this, you know that there's a difference that he carries himself and the environment treats him different. So I'm not saying that, you know, you, you want a guy that postures up. That's not what I'm saying. But we measure. We measure ourselves against other people, other men, all the time. We should. Why? It's in our nature. Do, do you want us to protect you or not? Do I need to walk into this place? I see those guys. They look like they can fuck me up. We're not going in there. Why? What are you afraid of? Bitch, I'm afraid of for my life and your life. Okay? How's that? They're not going to do anything. You see, you got the emotional mind, whatever. I got the logical one. They probably won't do anything, but they might do something. And if that fucking moment comes and I didn't re reason myself out of this thing, I'm going to fucking hate you. You, you have, I will then fuck you up. Okay. I will fuck you up. Why? Because, because why, why is it so important to be here? 
Oh, I know why. Just so you know, guys, are you ready for this one? Dun, dun, dun. Because if those guys can beat you, she should be with them. She doesn't need to leave. That's genetics kicking in. I like this place, though. You want me to die? The fuck? Why the fuck would you, as I'm a ram, you bring me like a three, three male rams right there with horns as big as mine. Not even one, three. Numbers count in this bitch, right? It, it actually counts. One wolf, three wolves, do the math. One bear, three bears. One scorpion, three scorpions. Like, it matters. You're not going to get into it. What are you going to do? We measure ourselves up. So I'm at this event, and I measure myself up. Now I'm like, I got this. I got this. I always got this. Then this one dude shows up, right? And people jumped on his nuts. I was surprised. I think someone stage dived right in front of me to grab his nuts for him. I was like, whoa. Hold on, Instagram cut me off. Give it a second. <clears throat> okay. No. Live. <clears throat> Here we go. So this dude shows up. I become aware of him because I see somebody stage dive another rapper past me and reach for this man's balls and, and hold it for him. And I was like, well, that was quite a move. And then I saw a bunch of groupies ring up and I was waiting for the groupies to be these little girls, but no, it was a bunch of rappers. And I was like, what the fuck? And I remember I was sitting there, the guy was on stage, we were on stage. And he walked up on the stage and there was, there was like a little groupie group of rappers running around him. All like, hey, 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 and I'm like, okay. And the dude comes up and posts up right in front of me. So I was like, perfect. Perfect. All right. And then I got to watch the interactions. Then one of the guys I respected a lot showed up. And he treated him even with respect, more than he would other people. He didn't nosedive for nuts, but he, he treated him. So at that moment, I said, pay attention, dude. And I analyzed the guy. My mind does this fucking thing, man. It's like a fucking eighth dimension thing I do. And then it comes up with the answer. And you know what it was? Well, that's not what it was, but what it was for me that I had to measure up to. When I looked at his hand, his fingers were iced out. And up until that moment, I, I, I cared about that as much as I would care about this fucking Coca-Cola right now. Like, it just didn't fucking matter to me. Zero. At all. I'm iced out with my tattoos. Like, bring it, right? But in that moment, I felt something. I felt this thing that every man has felt. It's a familiar feeling. It's not a good feeling. It's a bad feeling. It's a feeling that takes a giant and, and brings him down to the size of an ant. It's, we don't like this feeling. I felt something. And what I felt was, fuck. I don't got that, dude. I don't know if I could measure up to that. And I was like, ooh, wow, I fucking haven't had this in a long time. Oh my God, I forgot what this nasty feeling, this is, this is me thinking I'm less. <clears throat> so, I shook the man's hand in the next move. I said, now it's time. So I walked up. Shook his hand, made a little eye contact, and in my eye contact, I shot through my beautiful eyes, like the light of the sun, into his little eyes. Here's why I shot into it. Next time I shake your hand, my hands will be like that. And we'll see what it feels like. So I set out as a personal goal to ice out my hands from that moment. Why? That moment inspired me and showed me I hadn't reached my potential. I had more in me. You get it. So suddenly my rings become spiritual practice for me. Because, not because, you know, no, 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 no. Why, why did I feel that less? Because I know I'm capable of more. 
and I wasn't living up to my fucking standards, right? It's like saying Octavio get up and flex his abs. If you're a guy and you don't have abs like that, chances are you're gonna be like, oh. But that just means you should have abs like that. Because another guy might see his abs and be like, I don't give a fuck. Well, then you shouldn't have abs like that. How do you know? I know based on what I just told you. When I feel that boom, pow, that's my lack. I gotta go more. And some things I don't give a shit about at all. Like now I don't care at all. I, I care zero how good of a fighter somebody is. At some point in my life, I fucking cared big time. Like that was, that was the question in my head. Everywhere I went, like, can I take that guy on or not? Like that is literally what I thought about for so many fucking years and it drove me insane. Now, when I see a great fighter, I'm so relaxed. Not only that, I admire the shit out of him. Like, I'm the biggest fan of the fighters that I know. People don't know. Like, I, when I show up to their houses, I, I went to uh, L.A. and met a few people. And another guy showed up here this weekend. They want to hang out with me. I'm like, dude. Even though I've been them, it's weird. Since I no longer have them as com competition in my mind, I can much more freely admire their skill because I'm no longer judging my skill versus their skill. I'm not in that field. Now, I bet you in that moment that that man showed up, if I wasn't in his field and stood up to shake his hand, and I was just like, I was the fighter, Arash, I would have looked at him and be like, I would have admired the shit out of his jewelry instead of being pissed at the jewelry and be like, I need that shit too. So it was, it's just these, this, these packaged experiences that I choose to have, and that's the difference I'm trying to tell you, okay? You got to go, what are you trying to be? Okay, well, you know, there, there's a whole like line of experience for that. I don't know which girlfriend I was teaching this to. I think two of them, I remember two come to my mind. But I told both of them something like this. I said, look, all I have to do is find out what the matrix formula is for that experience. And then I just plug it in and I, and I just sit back. Then the universe helps me. Why? Because it's, a, it's already a written program that I'm running. I'm guaranteed that this is going to go through. That, that's how I've done everything. I've just cracked this code and I've read it. And that's what I do with my seduction. Trust me. Trust me. You really, you guys really have no clue what I can do with, with, with women. It's a little absurd now. It was already absurd, but it's like, you don't even know. It's so fucked up now that I will lose my erection because I'm tripping out on my power. <laughs> like that's so fascinating in the moment where I go, I, I, I lose, I, I'm not hard anymore. And I realized that I'm just like looking at the moment and going, what the fuck? And that is just completely taking me out of any kind of sexual experience. And I'm just tripping the fuck out of myself. Then I start thinking, dude, your dick's going soft. That's not good, right? This is, this is good for the girls. You girls never hear this shit. This is like locker room talk that you would never hear. We don't even talk about a locker room, but let me show you. But every guy knows this shit. And you go, fuck, fuck, fuck. Then the pressure of getting your dick soft and hard adds to the stress. Next thing you know, I'm having a whole fucking nervous breakdown internally because my dick is, is, is not hard. Whereas it originated with me sublimating my energy into some like godly shit, looking at the moment and be like, is this shit going down right now? The way it's going down, would any human being believe what just took place? No, they really wouldn't believe it. And then I go, am I gonna die with this shit? Now imagine, these are the thoughts I'm having while the bitch is trying to suck my dick. So obviously, I'm a little confused in my head. All right. But then stress enters the whole picture. And then I have to like tell myself, okay, think about like girls or something, dude. You know? And then uh, you know, you know what my new my, my new theory is? Just this is just to <laughs> see right there. Let me tell you what my this is for all the guys that go through this. Okay, I have I have a suggestion for you. I mean, this is like survival for me, dude. I have to do it like this. Here's what I've come up with. Bitch, you're not good enough. I'm sorry. Like, it's not my fault anymore. Like, that's it. All right? Be get a little bit better at what you're doing. I know your lady thinks it's her. I know. It's not, it's not her. 
It's never, listen, g- girls, listen, girls, my girlfriends, everyone, all women, it's not you, it's us. However, now I'm flipping it for myself because it's giving me a lot of anxiety just to fucking fuck around with people now. So I'm telling you, in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't know, figure it out, okay? You, you figure it out. Like, if you don't get wet, that's up to me to figure it out. I'm not going to sit there and be like, get wet. Right? She not wet yet? Get wet. Right? No, I got I to gotta, I gotta figure it out. I don't make it your job. I make it my job. All right? So, and I, and I will cure, cure all of your relationships. If, if, listen, if you're a girl and your man doesn't want to have sex with you anymore, he doesn't. You feel like he doesn't want to have sex with you. He doesn't. Why? Because you've been owning his balls and dick. Okay? So give it back to him. Have him go out for a little bit, at least to a fucking strip club. Let, let your man go to a strip club and you give, him, you give him $500. I say, I want you to go in there. I want you to get so many lap dances tonight. Okay? That man is going to come back and fuck you. I'm telling you. Especially if he's been with you without he, You won't believe your relationship would get so good. And what are you worried about? Some stripper. I know enough strippers. I was just with a stripper, just so you know. Minutes ago, I was with a fucking stripper. Minutes. Why was I late? Because I was with a fucking stripper. Okay? Let me tell you something about strippers. Sir. Uh, let me tell you something about strippers. They don't care about your man's dick. It's the, it's the last thing on her mind. She wants money. Okay? Your man's a sucker. It's okay. So that's how you fix your relationships. You go, look at it. See, right there. People are agreeing are there. You guys are, if you're on Instagram and you can click, there's 21 of you. If you want to click the link in my bio, come to the actual lecture from here. Okay? That's how you fix your relationship, woman. You just let your man go to a strip club and get some lap dances. And then when he comes back, you say, did you enjoy yourself? You go, we are like, oh, I didn't really do anything. Say, shut up. Don't be a pussy. Watch Arash Iron Nation. Don't do that. All right, but let's just say he comes back. He's like, yeah, baby, that was good. You know what? I'm telling you, you're about to get a pair of shoes if you could afford it. Whatever he could get you, it's coming your way now. And that's what you want. Look at Nikki right there. Nikki, do you have video? Can you click? You're super hot on my fucking IG. Click your video. Show us who you are. Look at Let's get some girls going here. There's Residé just being a fucking picture today. Okay? There's Antoinette. Antoinette's got a great... Hey, buddy, you guys got to see that one. Okay. All right, well, whatever. Okay. That's how you fix your relationship. Guys, how do you fix your relationship with your woman? How do you fix it? Well, there's a lot of different ways, but here's the first way you do it. You demonstrate to her that another woman wants you. And then when she acts up, because you're, you're fucked, by the way. If you do what I just said and you stop there, you're fucked. But I told you I'm going to do kind of like a mentorship and give you some answers that you can use. The moment that happens, she'll come after you. Oh, you're with your family. Got it, Nikki. She'll come after you like, you better if you, if you. And this is now the moment your relationship is about to get good. Are you ready? You show her another woman wants you. She says some shit like that. Here's your test, my friends. Here's your test. Now, don't take my advice. I'm an entertainer and I don't know what I'm saying, okay? But in this fantasy world, here's what happens. Here is the crucial moment. You turn to her and you say, bitch, what did you say? Say that one more time and I will be there tonight. And I don't care where the fuck you go, but you better not call me because I'm not picking up on you. She will just internally, she will internally, it will be like fucking... Uh, what is that? Mount Everest just crashes inside of her. <sighs> and she just feels this empty, like, <gasps> I'm going to die. She can't breathe. And you look at her and he said, you got me? Now be happy that I choose to stay with you. Because no one's going to put up with your stupid shit. And you know it. Now you can fool another fucking dude and he'll do whatever you say because he wants to fuck you, but I've already fucked you enough times to know, okay? Now, if you're gonna get bent out of shape over this bitch, then it tells me for sure, for sure, I don't wanna waste another year with you, okay? Because it's not just her. There's a lot of women that want me, and that's why you want me, 
And if you ever try to take that shit away from me, believe me, we're done. I don't know who the fuck you think you're talking to. Okay? I'm not going to be home tonight. Well, then you're never coming home. You're damn right. Better not call me tonight because it's not being picked up. My friends, grab your shit, drive to Reno, Nevada, and check into the Bunny Ranch for three, four days. Grab a fucking credit card. It's a, it's a brothel. Grab a credit card and be ready to spend like $30,000 to save your life because that bitch is going to take more than $30,000 from you. Trust me. Do this right and you'll do more than that. You don't need $30,000, but just grab a fucking card. Be, go, go to stay. Stay next door. Don't stay at the ranch if you want. But every day for the next three days, you don't answer that bitch and you fuck a prostitute. And every time she says she misses you and she cries, you answer her. You text her. The moment she tries to make you wrong, you say, you say that again, I'm done talking to you. She does, you cut it off and you go fuck a prostitute. After about three or four prostitutes, something will change inside of you and you'll realize you should have never been with that woman. The spell starts to wear off of you. When that happens, she starts to feel different about you. She starts to see the man in you again. Because the moment you don't want her, she wants you. You guys know these are facts. But how do you apply them? I'm showing you how to apply them. What I'm telling you is the application and how to get there. Because otherwise, your, your, your world is hers. She's taken over. Then, when she wants to make peace, it's time to renegotiate the terms of the relationship. Why? Because now it's been established, you no longer need her. And that's what you needed to know. That's what she needed to know. So now it's like, listen, here's how it's going to go. Otherwise, we're good. Why? Because we're already broken up. Don't fuck with me. Let me tell you something. I've had over 20 breakups in the last two and a half, three years. No, a little bit more. Four, no, 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 no. Six, seven years. Whenever the fuck I started the double, uh, multiple relationships, right? No, that's not, it's not true. This is two years. That's ridiculous. Okay. I've had a lot of breakups. These are the lessons I've learned. This is how I've learned how to deal with it. That's just the way it is. Okay? Now, I just told you how to fix your relationship. I didn't say how to destroy her. You see that? You thought that. But I'm telling you, the woman who goes through the experience I just said will once again fall in love with her man. Or she'll leave him, which is fine. She should have left him then. Let's not waste any more time. Then she's going to go be an independent woman somewhere or she's going to completely destroy another man there's so many destroyed men just walk walk outside and look i walk and i look at them i'm like what happened to you bro you're a warrior you're a player you're a hustler you're a king that's every man there's other things like there's merchant but merchant is a hustler you have to have one of these things in you as a man. You have to have one of these things with you. These are the characters in a video game, you see? Warrior, player, hustler, king. Which one do you want? Don't you have another one? Sure, faggot. What do you, what do you want? The fuck is that one? What do, you, what do you mean, do I have another one? I don't know. I just don't really feel any of those. Okay. Uh, faggot. I don't know. Like, what else are you going to go? Well, well, uh, I like bodybuilding. Cool. Approach it like a fucking warrior or a fucking king of your life or be a player when you do like, like you got to approach it with a spirit of hunter, man. Hunter is a good one. We could put hunter in there, but you see, I don't do that because I'm real smart with my language. You get it? That's why no one's been able to take me down for so many fucking years. I speak better than everybody around me, so they can't attack me. You don't want to say hunter. Nation of hunters. What the fuck? Could have said witches, warlocks, and shit like that too. You know, I'll do I'll do one for that another time. Okay. <laughs> IMC Nation, nation of Christians, Buddhists, Muslims. It's true. It is. I don't listen. I love every fucking religion. I always say it. I fucking love it. You just have to use it properly, and you have to do a little bit. It's, like, okay, hold on. Here it is. Whatever religion you are, I hold you responsible to find the truth in that religion and be able to deliver it. Please. Okay. It's not done yet. The job is not done. You're the next prophet of the religion. 
now in 2018, use what we know, quantum physics and shit, and go figure it out and tell me about it. Okay, I would love to accept it. I would, I would love, 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 love someone to give me a fucking answer to this thing that works without faith. Please, all I'm doing is looking for it. I'm disproving my own shit every day. Okay, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to try to disprove your own facts. Figure it the fuck out. Argue yourself out of it and see if you can. Okay, damn. We're all good people. You guys get it? There's very few bad people around here. There's very few bad people. Okay? We got we to gotta team up, man. <laughs> like we got to put shoulder to shoulder and do some shit. There's enough money for everybody. And money is the thing we're all really going after. I, mean, I swear, if you break it down in the, in, the, in the lowest rung of the ladder, you're going to find money is like right there. It's like right there. I don't care how much you think you want love. I don't care how much you think you want. It's, it's the money. The money you have enough of it, it does something. I don't have enough of it. I would, if I had enough of it, you guys would come onto my lecture and I would pay each person a hundred bucks just for showing up. Not because I need you to show up, but because I want to give money to people. I really fucking do. I love, love, love helping people out more than anything. And I know nothing helps people out more than money. <laughs> it's just what it is, right? I could give you the greatest advice or give you $10,000. Take the $10,000, okay? Because otherwise you have to take my advice and make 10, yes, my advice is, is, is um, priceless and all that. I understand. That's true, but I can't prove that and I can prove $10,000, okay? I'm for the proof. Here it is, there's the money, it's in your hands. Don't, don't walk around and pray for the homeless, give them some shit or help them with some shit or do something. I don't know, man. Or pray, prayer works, dude. You have to know how to do it, but don't just, don't just pray. Have you ever been in a really, 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 really bad situation in your life where you just feel hopeless? Most likely, you prayed or reached up somewhere, okay? For myself, for myself, one of the proofs of a higher power is just that. I don't need anybody. Nobody came to me and said, pray up when you're about to fucking die or someone's going to die. But when shit hit me so hard and I had nowhere to go, I felt a need to speak up and out upwards to, and ask for some help for something higher. Now, I don't know where that fucking came from, but I can tell you it didn't come from a book. I guarantee you it didn't come from my, my Muslim upbringing as a child. It didn't grow up as my Christian upbringing a second time as a child. It, no, this was 100% this was me. I, I know the feeling of me uh, coming out. And when I'm in really, really bad situations, as I've been in recently in some of the worst situations in my life, like in the last, I would say, two months, I have cried and spoken up out loud to God, or I say, I say God or whoever the fuck is listening or whoever the fuck can help. I need help. And this is what I need help with. And this is how I do it. And then I state it. And then I say this, I will give whatever the fuck you want for it. You see that? And maybe that's how Zapar entered my life. And maybe he's real, maybe he's not. I don't care. I find myself speaking out loud for too many years. So for myself, without anybody telling me, if someone said, is there a God? I would say there's, there's high power for sure. I know it. My go-to is that. Then there's a second go-to I have. I look in my life and I go, how the fuck did I do this right? <laughs> Now, listen, as fucked up as you may be, if you looked at your life right now, exactly where you are, I don't care. I don't care what position you're in. You could actually say, how did I get this right? Because you had a lot of opportunities to fuck up worse than that. You know what I mean? Like, you could have been way worse than that, man. With the shit you've gone through, I haven't even been there. But think about it. You were one decision away from murdering someone one time. You were one decision away from crashing your car into the wall. One decision away from doing some stupid shit you didn't like. One decision away from hitting somebody you shouldn't have hit. One decision away from like, just one decision from total and utter destruction of your life. And then I have friends of mine who are in jail. Even them, you're still surviving. And in jail, you've been one decision away from getting a bigger sentence. One decision away from, from uh, ending your life. One, like, it doesn't matter where you find yourself. 
you you just you've always just somehow fucking made it right now your human storyline is not maybe as good as the next man's or the next one's or this one or that one however it's your storyline and it's so fascinating to everybody else you're missing that you're missing that i have homies that are in jail one of the things i watch all the time is lockup gangland those are my favorite shows and they've been for years somebody out there is admiring your life that shit life you have somebody's admiring you and you need to know that because knowing that calms you down you can't keep running from your life now if you want them to admire it you must communicate about it that's the problem you're keeping it to yourself too much and so it's boiling up into fucking oysters inside of what the fuck it does okay it's turning into some shit you don't want now i remember when think think back right the 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 history of the west west coast of the united states where i'm at the music of it see music the hip-hop music started in the east coast of the united states new york bronx the, that area west when the west came out their music was talking about what the west saw and the guys that came out we know you know uh, going back in time nwa a little bit before them there was some people but they talked about what gang banging they talked about drugs they talked about pimps and hoes and low riders and palm trees and shit like that that was fascinating to everybody who wasn't that like wait these guys actually do that shit but all they did is they just talked about their culture and they were surprised as shit when people started buying it they're just like well what do you mean all i did was just tell you what happened here all right as a popo rolls by, like, oh, well, that, well, that's what happens, actually. Right? Jesus, the phone keeps falling. I keep on falling in love with you. I always tell girls that when I get with them, I say, look, your strength and your beauty comes from the shit you've been through. Don't hide it. You know all that bad shit that happened to you as a girl? I want to know that. Okay? Why? Because that shit is crazy that you're still able to, like, date. <laughs> you know? When you watch a movie, what do you watch? You watch drama? You watch horror? Comedy? Uh, action adventure? It's the basics, right? You're watching somebody's drama and admiring it, right? Your life is also drama as fuck. It's just a different drama. Somebody else can look at you. So tell your story. That's why people sell books. Tell your story. It's okay. That's where communication comes in. That's what seduction is. If you want to be a master of seduction, be able to tell your story in a way where everybody gets it and be able to hear people's stories and get what they're saying. Admire their stories. Get it? Admire what they've been through. See, Nikki says lots of shit, and I'm going to click that, and I'm going to read that. Listen, Nikki's one of these fine women, right? Like, you'll see when she shows up. She goes, mm -hmm, yep, lots of shit happened to me. Nice to know people still want to even hear. I'm telling you, that's the seduction, everybody. You can't have five girlfriends, and I don't know how many other fucking women are with me that are fine, right? without knowing what I just said right now. I could have Nikki if Nikki and I meet. Now, you could say no right now, Nikki, and it doesn't really make any difference. But the fact of the matter is, if I met and I talked to her, I could have her. Why? Because it wouldn't be to have her. It would be to understand everything she just said right now. Now, I'm fascinated, you see? I'd want to know what happened. What do you mean? Well, people don't listen? Well, fuck, that's what I want to know more than anything, though. And then as she would tell me, I would begin to admire her survival of it, because I do. And she would begin to heal because it's the first time she doesn't have to be embarrassed or ashamed or even regret what happened because it shaped who she was. And so what I just said is like soul whispering, you could call it. I called it a long time ago. 
you, you, you grab the person's soul and they're yours. Look, let me tell you something. I, I repeat again and again and again. Hopefully I'm made wrong one day and I'll be able to deal with that one. Don't, don't worry about it. I, I want to be made wrong just so I can show you how to. How I want. I'm waiting for a girlfriend of mine to cheat on me while I'm public. I'm public now. My life is public. Whichever girlfriend cheats on me, I will, be, I will let it be known who it was. And, how, and you will then see. No, no, no. Not, not to fuck with them because I may stay with them. I'm telling you. You know? I'm pretty sure if Hannah and Lecture cheated on me, I'd stay with them. I'm pretty sure that would happen. I, I wouldn't break up with them. If they wanted to keep cheating on me, that's done. Okay? That doesn't give them a free pass because it's not going to be like, oh, you cheated. It's okay. No, life's going to get a little difficult. But maybe you'll see it one day. Okay? But the statement I'm going to make is like that jinxing statement, right? So I know what I'm getting myself into. That's all I'm telling you. I, mean, I know what's happening here. You know, I really, really have 100% confidence that none of my girlfriends cheat on me okay I, I i feel it i like i just know i know i have no no like nothing on that okay now i also know situations that would tempt a woman to like they're not going to be spending night at floyd mayweather's house with his six girlfriends while he's sh throwing diamonds in their face and i'm like i don't care you don't cheat like that's not going to happen you know what i'm saying i'm not a fucking idiot they're not either it's like, well, let's be smart about the fucking situation, right? But the reason I'm telling you that is because outside of a weird circumstance like that, that's not going to happen. I get to know these girls more and more every day. Today, our relationship is stronger than yesterday. Tomorrow, stronger than today. So how could anybody catch that? That's how you seduce, by the way. That's how you seduce. What about women? I'm so, uh, I'm not going to use those words. They're such gay words, but I can use them because I'm talking about women. I can use gay words when we talk about women, by the way. All right. I'm not going to call a woman a faggot, but I'll call a guy a faggot. Big difference, right? So that word doesn't go there. But I'm going to, I can say it with women, I can say this. I'm so frustrated, I wouldn't say that to a guy, and I'm so mad at women, I wouldn't say that to a guy. Bro, I'm real frustrated and mad at you. <laughs> There's other ways to say it, I wouldn't be that. It's okay, like it's cool, but I, I have another way of saying it, sure. Like, I'd be like, bro, I don't fucking get you, right? You're fucking with me now. You're fucking with my mind. I don't, I don't fucking get what the fuck you're doing, okay? It's fucking with me. And then I would probably say what I was going to say next. Say a lot of fucking, 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 fucking happened. We got it, though. But I, I'm, I'm frustrated. It's funny you didn't say the words. I'm so frustrated and I'm mad at women. Uh, because you, you could have it so good, girls. Okay? Just soften up a little bit. Just soften up a little bit. Okay? And try, try this. Just try it. Are you independent women that are doing so good in life. Try this one, Okay? Say, say, you're not going to have the courage, man. But if I came back as a woman, I would say this, okay? Say, I've realized I'm not complete without a man. I realize that the whole idea of independent woman is just pure bullshit that's destroying women. And I've decided that I'm looking for a man who's strong enough, honest enough, and powerful enough to make me his queen. In exchange, he will be treated as a king knowing a king always has concubines, but he only has, he only has one or two queens. When I say one or two queens, let me tell you what I mean by that. Like Alexander the Great, like I'm a conqueror. I have queens. But they all have their own roles. You get how that goes? They're all treated in queens in their own areas of life. All right. So I'm saying that for, for people who can get to that level, because otherwise, like, it, it could sound like, well, he said you have one queen. No, 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 no. So she says, I'm looking for that. If you say that, I promise you, and you stuck to your guns, and then you started to put pictures with makeup on and took off all pictures without makeup, you would never have to wear, you would never have to post a picture in underwear, bikini, shorts, or you just saying that, and then be, and be as classy as you can be after that, but show yourself looking good, and have men take you out and fight for you.
not I fight for you, but let's see, pick your, because you, you're going to get so many fucking proposals, it's going to be ridiculous. Instead of going out there, trying to pretend like you're okay, and twerking like a fucking whore everywhere you go, and trying to get a bunch of attention on Instagram, like a fucking whore that you are, do what I told you. And then you can weed out the men you don't like, and there'll be men who will approach you properly because of the way you said it. Okay? We're only put, ah, oh, this fucking battery's going to die, though. See if I can make this work. <laughs> that's like on stilts now. My phone's almost like on stilts. Well, I don't know how that's staying. I don't know how that's staying. I should show you guys how that's staying. It's gonna fall. Hold on. <laughs> it, it shouldn't have stayed. But I'm gonna do it again. I'm just not gonna try to move it anymore. Obviously, if you can do it once, you can do it twice. What the fuck? Okay. Maybe it's not. Maybe maybe it works. Okay. Uh, we only put up with whores right now and we give them attention because there's no contrast. Where's the non-whore? Not, not, not the ugly girl that no one cares. I mean like, a, like, a, like an Electra, a Hannah, Jessica, a Christelle. Like where's them? Because when they show up, you whores are done, okay? If a classy woman with a beautiful body, beautiful face, with confidence shows up, who carries herself heavy, like she's not loose, we want her, dude. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna try to go for her. We're gonna push you aside. Or we'll fuck you a bunch of times, but we're gonna try to go for her. She will marry her though, okay? But we don't, we, we don't have anything to contrast with. Do you know how rare it is to find a virgin female right now in the United States? It's like women are ashamed to be virgins now. If that is not the most backward thing I've ever fucking heard in my life, if that doesn't tell you that something is going the wrong direction, then you got to know. Like to find a 20, 21 year old virgin. It's like, like, good, like, you know, you already, if she says she's a virgin, you go, fuck, no, you're lying to me. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way. So rare that we wouldn't even know what the fuck to do with you. Oh, I think they're spitting with you. Oh, wouldn't you be afraid to have sex with a virgin? I go, oh, okay. You're like, no, I would, I would rip her apart. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> right? You ain't IMC Nation, that's for sure. No, no, we got, we got ethics, believe it or not. Our guys got ethics. Like, I think that's a little weird. You, you have to be a little careful. You can't just take your fat cock and slam it into her. You know what I mean? Like, she's waited 23 fucking years or 21 years, and she's about to give it to you. You lighten up a little bit, okay? You, you don't be so savage. So the fact that we don't have virgins anymore and we don't even hold that as a value right imagine to be like i'm looking for a virgin <laughs> where where are you going where are you gonna get a fucking african tribe and grab a zulu girl right with her titties flat with the fucking two raisins at the end of them get the fuck out of here right there's nothing sexy about those bitches i remember being younger watching these uh discovery channels i would watch i this all i watched okay and I was so disappointed that none of these hosts could get me fucking turned on, right? And you know, you do what I did, right? Where you try to make them hot in your mind. You're just like, oh, her ass is not too bad. And then you realize it's not even her, it's a guy. Like, oh, fuck. That was a dude's ass that was like built. Her ass is just weird. What's wrong with these women? They're the ugliest things in the world. And then you look at the guy, you go, the guy's better looking than her. Like, I wouldn't fuck him, but he's better looking than her. All the African tribal guys, are better looking than the African tribal women. The women are ugly as fuck. The guys could actually be hot in like a modern society. You take one of these like African Zulu tribe guys, right? Put them in some nice, ah, nice jeans, Jordans or whatever the fuck you got, right? And, and just dress them up kind of nicely. Okay. And the dude, even with his accent, will, will fucking get, get bitches left and right. Right? He just has to walk up and have an accent like that with the big white teeth. 
and oh, I don't understand. It's okay. You're fucking everybody, bro. Why? Because you're built. You're pretty fucking, you're pretty aesthetically built. You got some shoulders. Your arms always have a, uh, some kind of like line going through it. Some kind of vein always shows on their fucking arms. They, they all have this one bicep <laughs> vein, right? All the African fucking Zulu uh, shows that we used to watch. Yeah, like that. So these guys are fucking, they're cool. And you even start thinking, I wonder if my bitch would like him. You know, I, I don't know, right? He's probably, but does he fuck like a jaguar? What the fuck? You know what I mean? And then you try to do that shit. Shout out to the Oracle. Uh, and then you, you look at these bitches from these shows and you try to make them pretty. You go left and right and her teeth are gnarled up this way and her fucking nostrils are too goddamn big for everyone. And she's got like these raisin, raisin on her fucking stomach like what the fuck is happening with you right and she's got a kid on her arm and the kid is eating a fly while snotting into his mouth and you go wow there's zero attraction to you you're, you're negative attraction even if I brought your fucking weird ass into the United States and dressed you up as a woman you could not make it you look like a cr creature out of a fucking bad movie okay yeah what's the whole point of this shit I don't remember anymore uh, yeah, how to, how to get with men and women, okay? That's what it was. So, ladies, we want women. This is a movement. IMC Nation is a movement. We, we want queens. We will queen you up, okay? We will, queen, we, will make, we will make you into a fucking queen, okay? Remember, queen means we're a king. And remember, kings, we have a choice. We may want to stay with one queen, but it's a choice. It's not a, it's not a decree. You know what I mean? It's not a fucking law of the land. It's like... Yeah, I want to be with you. And then maybe two years later, I'm like, you know what? I want a concubine. You know what a concubine is? Like on the side, I need my own woman. And a real king would bring her in and be like, oh, there's the castle. You get the left quarter for my concubine. Why? And the concubine couldn't even have a child with him. And the concubine was basically his woman. <laughs> that, that's what people understood. They didn't like the name concubine. And he probably just did that for the queen. He was just smart. Because I asked the concubine. Oh, as long as I'm the queen. And I don't care. Okay, well, whatever. You're the queen. Okay? What is she? She's a concubine. Obviously. The fuck? I have to say it twice? Say it three times. She becomes the queen. You become the concubine. How would you like that shit? Okay? That's me as a king. Okay? So, ladies, you can get guys if you, if you do what I told you. And men, let's man up. We need some men. This whole thing started with saying we need some men to shoulder up with us. We need some men to get our back. We need some men to watch over our shoulder. We need some men to pull us forward. And then we have to become these men. I made this video with my friend, Joseph. He's a fighter. He's a white, a white guy. My, uh, I think his Instagram is Joe the Hurt or something. Okay. Joe the Hurt, Joseph. Shout out to you, bro. I was uh, walking again with him this uh this high school and i saw him and you know he's, he's just cool one of these cool guys right and we're talking i said what are you doing he goes oh i'm just uh basically passing on tradition he had his son with him because he used to play football there and man i love that moment so much and i put it on my instagram i'm like dude that's what it's about right that's like what a father son is like son let me take you down oh that's what he said he goes we're going down memory lane I'm like come here and then the father should say, look, I don't have all the answers, but what I did is I got me some mentors. So I'm going to give you what I've given you. Where I'm lacking, son, you must find yourself. But your base is me because their mentors are going to fail you. But your base is me. So you can always come back and, and, and run it by me if you're not sure about the answers. But... Like, for example, Arash, AZD, I could not teach my son anything about mechanical, like anything. I couldn't throw, do an email, and I couldn't fucking change a car tire. So I'd be like, you're going to have to go find a fucking uncle or a friend or somebody who knows how to do this shit, or for the rest of your life, you're going to have to rely on other people the way I did. What do you want to do, son? If he's like, I don't care. No, I didn't care either. We're good. If he's like, well, I, well then go find a mentor. I'm not going to try to teach you shit I don't know. Okay? Why? Because it's not about me being cool. It's about my son surviving better. That's it. Okay, let's, let's switch gears into another mode. Because this was my experience today, so I had to break it down. Hold on. I had an interesting moment today. 
that I haven't had in a long time. I went out with some new chick today, right? It's pretty hot. She got in the car, driving a little bit, suddenly I had a realization. Shit, I don't know this chick. Like, I haven't got a chance to know her at all. And then I was like, well, this is kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm driving in my head. I don't even know what song to play. My playlist goes all over the place. And I go with, what do I do? And you're like, well, play whatever you want. No, no, I'm a master of seduction. You play whatever you want. Okay? I'll play the right thing for what I want. All right? And there's no accident in my world. So I'm trying to figure out what fucking song to play. So then I'm like, do you know who Burner is? <laughs> She's like, yeah. So I start with my song, obviously, right? So then it goes that. It goes to the African rock star song. She loves the songs. Now it kind of breaks the ice, right? Go forward a little bit. And then <laughs> what do I do next? Like, I, I got into the small. Like, what the fuck are we doing? This is kind of weird. And I go, oh, this is, this is that awkwardness people feel. I forgot this this feeling. Why? Because I don't move this fast normally with somebody. I get to know them and shit like that. This is, I, I, I'm experimenting, you know? Anyways, long story short, I saw all these awkward moments in it. And you know what I had to do, which is what I wanted to recommend to you? I had to be like, this ain't about me, dude. This is not. I'm here to seduce her. <laughs> right? So what I need to do now is it's not about me being uncomfortable. It's about making sure she's fucking comfortable. So how the fuck am I going to do that? My phone fell again. You know what that was. Got a, I got the screen replaced today. It's fallen four times now. You got this? You got this? Lost my chip in the process. It was such a good chip. I was waving it. It was such a perfect looking chip. this shit Himalayan salt anyways it got more and more comfortable as I started to discover who she was and what I really liked which I want to pass on to the girls is she was uh, very soft not to the touch to that too, but soft and caring. A few times she said some stuff. I said, you're playing me, huh? I said, well, I like it. And then I was like, is she playing me? <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's good. I don't even know if I'm being played right now. And then I was like, it doesn't matter. And I realized, see, that's what seduction is. Seduction is, even if you're playing me, it feels good. Go ahead. It's fine. No, I'm, I'm, it's okay. Why? Because you're cool about it. It's just cool. You're not trying to do it in a way that's weird. You know, it's like... It's like I appreciate it. I appreciate that you think about me enough to choose your words a certain way to create an effect on me. Why do I appreciate that? Because you're not a prostitute. I ain't paying you, bitch. I didn't just take you out and buy you a bunch of shit. We're hanging out. It's all good. Now, you may have a master plan in mind, like in 10 dates from now, but that's cool. If every date you treat me like that, you don't have to do nothing. It comes to me naturally. Now, she's not being genuine. Okay, fine. I admit, she may not be being genuine. But the other way, where a girl has been genuine, and I've had a, thought, a bunch of these, where she's been genuine, she's also been a bitch, and we've broken up really fucking bad, all right? So maybe she would be disgenuine and give me two years of disgenuineness, or one year, of the, and, and it'll just be blissful. And then I'll realize that she fucked up, and that she was a piece of shit, and she cheated or lied to me. At that moment, I don't want to be with her anymore, which is fucking great, and I'll hate her. And I have now experienced one or two years of a soft female. See, I'm okay with each experience being what it is for what it is. And this is the power that's mine now that I can give. 
you don't need to put your experience into the next week into the next week. They don't need to follow this fucking weird order that doesn't happen in nature. It's just each experience is each experience. So for example, let me give you an example. What's up, Yuli? I had a girlfriend. Her name is Felicia. Some of you guys remember that time when she was with me. Felicia and I were together for about close to seven years. It's a long time. When we broke up, at the time of our breakup, I discovered that she was cheating on me for the last two years of my relationship. For two years, that woman lied right to my face. Convincing as shit. She had worked it out where on her Facebook, you could send secret messages, you could do where people don't see certain posts. She had it all worked out where she could freely post about me, but I'm so sorry, my Felicia. But her other boyfriends wouldn't see it. So I would see the post and it would be like, you know, me and her and something really beautiful she wrote about me or some shit. I mean, just like, it was crazy. So I discovered it, right? When I think back about Felicia and the seven years I had with her, it was one of my favorite relationships I ever had. I swear to God, I don't have one ounce of like whatever. Why? She was a dope girlfriend. And for the last two years that I didn't fucking know, she was still dope. And when I found out, it was not that hard to not want to be with her. It was quite easy, actually. I even gave her a chance. You see, you didn't get to experience that because I wasn't as uh, popular as I am now online. But I gave her a chance that night. I said, do you want to be with that guy or do you want to be with me? Oops. I said, because if you want to be with him, go. And we're done. If you want to be with me, I said, I will figure out a way I said, I will figure out a way for, us to, for this to work. What do you want to do? After she was caught red-handed <laughs> by my other girlfriend, Raquel at the time, um, she said, I want to be with you. I said, okay, cool. That's it. Let me be with me then. I didn't know I was going to do it, but that's fine. So the next day or two was the process of trying to figure out how to be together. And during that process, it didn't go right, and we broke up. Now watch this. That was a portion of my life. It was beautiful. It was incredible. I learned some shit. I had so many experiences with Felicia that I'll never have with another woman because she was so fucking unique in her way. Right? It was fucking amazing, man. And no longer does it need to bother me with my current life. It was a great fucking movie I was in, guys. Fuck. Like now I can say everything about it. I still won't say some shit just out of respect, I just as a human being to another human being, honestly, right? I'll keep some shit to myself. But it's now, that part of my relationship is an is a open book now. You can know a lot of things about that now. I'll share sexual things that I wouldn't have shared before because that relationship is done. The world has learned a lot because of Felicia and I being together. It's fucking dope. So it's okay to have these experiences and go start uh, middle end or start at the Scientology band it was start change stop that was L. Ron Hubbard it's a cycle it's like birth growth death Buddhism right Hinduism Buddhism and nothing lasts forever so if we learn to end cycle then we could move on and enjoy what we had or end cycle on a bad experience. If you were molested, if you were raped, it happens to so many women. I know it's easier said than done, but I should still say it. You can end cycle and say, it's done. It was an experience that happened. It's back in time. It was a time then, you're in a time now. This is how you use time, by the way. You 
you should use time. It uses you every day. The way you use time is you split it and you go, that was then, this is now. Okay? Because what's happening is that then is coming to now with you and that's what's fucking you up. Well, brother, you got to get on my mentorship class if you want to learn. That's where the lessons are. Okay? So it's everybody's walking around apologizing for these things that happened to them. You, you've, had some, you've had some experiences. Own that. Completely own it. Let the energy of it move you again. Change you again. I remember, uh, I, I'm not going to say name, okay? But somebody online that's watching right now, okay? One of, one of the, the, the students that's on right now. I had observed a relationship that the person was in before. And I observed the relationship start, I saw it go to its growth, and then I saw it end. When the relationship was going, it was a really good relationship from the outside for sure. That's where I was looking from. And what I would see was somebody who had a similar relationship with his girlfriend than I did with mine, mine's because there's more than one. And I could see the way that the, the female was responding to the male. I was like, these guys are on the right track. This is, this is the application of studying AZD. This is what happens. The woman submits, falls in love, stays loyal, blah, 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 blah. Then there was the breakup. And then the female proceeded to act exactly as my ex is acting. And the person went through a very, very similar pain that I went through. And I said, oh, wow, okay. So this is, a, this is a program then. This is way too similar. I can start to predict shit now. This is crazy. Then I saw another student. Let me see if the name is here. My God. Okay, I'm going to turn my phone sideways, guys. So I think it's going to land easier like that. Or stay easy. Oh, look at this. Look at, look at, look at, look at here. Let me see if this works. But it has to be sideways, so you're going to have to flip me. Flip me. Flip me off. There we go. Okay, sorry. This way now. There we go. Okay. Let me see if the other person's on. Nope. There was another student that comes on a lot, right? And I saw him in another relationship, and I saw his girlfriend, and I saw how she acted, and I was like, oh, here we go. I did get reminded of the other student because I said, oh, here's another one. And then I saw their breakup. And then I saw the girl act exactly as that guy's did and mine. And I said, holy fuck, this is crazy. And I began to predict what his girlfriend would do next. And I got it again. And I got it again. I said, oh my God, this is a program that's running currently in this moment. I have a student of mine who's on that matrix. I can sit here and guarantee what's about to happen. She's about to leave him and betray him. She's about to destroy his business when, he go, when she goes to try to destroy it. She's about to continue to teach whatever he taught her. She's going to pretend like she knows what it is. And she's going to go and she's going to start making videos, just like he does. And she's going to start to do all this kind of weird shit. And eventually, she's going to get with some fucking loser-ass guy who's going to be an imitation of him. Like, literally, that's what's going to happen. Okay, a weak imitation. When that day comes, I'll ask him because I'm close with him if I could say that that's the guy I was talking about. That day is coming. Which brings me to a really interesting point. I think I said to Electro today, I said it to someone, I think it was Electro. I said, Have you ever considered how easy it is to predict human behavior? It's not a mystery, guys. It's pretty fucking simple. Advertisers do it all the time. There's like a math to it. They, they can tell you with pretty certain accuracy how many people are going to buy that thing or when they're going to buy that thing. Or It's done with surveys. And, and this is an enormous, enormous industry. They can feed data into a computer saying that if you're, let's say I'm 41 years old, 41 year old man, tattooed all over his body with piercings, 
with multiple girlfriends and has pit bulls, lives in the United States. Brr, boom, pop, that thing will come out with a pretty fucking accurate description of a bunch of shit about me. It could probably say what kind of car I'm going to drive. It'll be one of the ones I've driven, for sure. It would be, it would tell you what kind of, you know what I mean? Like, it's pretty fucking easy that it can do that. So I have a different perspective on human behavior. I think people are so easy to predict. You're guaranteed your success. Like, I'm guaranteed my success. I, I keep showing it, okay? All I do is I just find the pattern that's being run. <laughs> if I see the pattern developing again, I got to stop. Change it up. Why? Because I know what the next number is going to be. It keeps being that number. So remember that, that story I gave you in the beginning? I said what the guy should do to the girl. She comes home. She goes, were well, you looking at it? Blah, blah, blah. He says, that's him creating a brand new pattern. Brand new series of numbers. And telling her, if we're going to continue, these are the numbers. And if you don't want to continue, then I'm no longer running that pattern with you. And that's how easy it is to change the course of your life. You're running a pattern. Look around you. You're being like somebody who was before you. Okay? How did I know for a fact, 100%, that the whole world would be listening to me? Because the more I studied the history, the more I saw I was running a certain pattern. I don't know why. And I know what that pattern does. I told you lecture today, right? I bought myself some nice stuff. I said... Um, I said, this is good, but this is nothing compared to the people that are spending money. This is just way better than it was before. And I said to her, I'm not going to buy that shit. I said, let me tell you what's going to happen. Somebody extremely wealthy, and I named a few people actually, they're going to gift me with that. I said, one of them is going to come to me and be like, here's your Rolls Royce. Just take it. You know? I said, no, I have a fucking Rolls Royce. I said, then someone's going to be like, here's your Rolex. And it's going to be a big Rolex. And it's going to be this. I said, because you know how I know this? I go, when I study history, the people who have come like me, this is what they've done. You, you know who, who gives gifts to people like me? Kings and presidents and gangsters and, and mafias. And, and the men in power give gifts to men like me in history. So I'm, I know this is, how do I know? What's, it's, what's going on, actually? I've, I've seen it. Yeah, I could see the future by seeing, looking at the past. And you can do the same thing. So many times I tell my girlfriends, when someone acts a certain way, someone acts a certain way, I always tell them, I say, are you surprised or not? Like, that's the first thing I want to know. For example, if your mom is crazy, right, and then she acts crazy, are you surprised? No, okay, then, then don't bring it up like you're surprised. Okay. I'm surprised that you're surprised. Like, I, I knew she was going to act like that. Of course. What the fuck? Oh, something was crawling on me. I'm having a really hard time killing, like, insects these days. Just because I'm looking at life differently. It's fucking cricket in my fucking office, man. It's got a fucking roommate. I got a fucking roommate that I don't want. Right? Trying to, trying to make this, this guy leave. So I go to my office today. He's on my mind right away because I really can't stand bugs. I'm that guy who like go in the corner of the room and sleep in the corner if the bugs on that side. Fuck that. I don't want. I don't want bugs around me. And so of course every time I walk into my office, I'm not in my office right now, but every time I walk into my, I think about this fucking cricket. And I remember the last time where I saw it, it was under this place. Like I, I remember that even though it was two days ago. So naturally, when I walk in, I wonder if he's in that room. Then I'm like, could he have gone under the door into the other room? Well, you know, I slept there the other night. and I do this whole thing. And I'm like, God, this fucker has really taken my attention. You know? And a part of me wants to see him just so I know where the fuck he is. The other part of me hopes he died somewhere in a corner. And then I thought, do they die by themselves? And I thought, what does a cricket eat? Then I thought, what if he has babies? What if I come to a bunch of crickets in here? And then... I just started thinking, this is so weird. Like, he probably doesn't even give a fuck about me. Like, that's how I got rid of haters in my mind, right? When I realized they don't care about me, I was like, well, they actually don't care. Like, no one cares. Oh, then I dropped all any significance of anybody giving a shit about me because I just like, nobody cares anyways, right? It's funny when he said, I don't know, I care about you. And I know they genuinely care, but not like really, right? <laughs> I just don't buy it. This is not going to happen. Look, 
I care about people. I know how I treat them. Okay. Now maybe every human being can say this, but I care about people. All right. And I treat them a certain way. And so far, nobody has treated me that way. That's how I can measure it. So maybe I'm real fucked up and I probably am, but The only way I know if someone cares about me is not because they said they cared about me. Not because Janice said that Jackie cared about me. Not because my pendulum said Jackie cared about me. But because when I'm around Jackie, I feel that Jackie cares about me. It's, it's an internal thing. So I'm sure Jackie cares. It's just that that's not how I care for people. So if Jackie's level of care is two, mine is 10, mine is, mine is 10, then we're fucked, aren't we? We need to find people who can match our give and our take. Mm -hmm. I had an idea today. Theory, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna share it with you. So I think if I talk it out, it'll come out and come better. I thought a man should check a woman's insecurity before he gets with her, and a woman should check a man's insecurity before she gets with him. Because if your insecurities are off, like one, see one's there, it's not gonna work. I think two insecure people will stay together better than a secure and an insecure person. Their insecurities will keep them together. And I think two secure people will stay together. Their securities keep them together, right? I, I can work that out. Now, I don't know for sure. But I think a, a secure person with an insecure person won't last because... The insecurities of the person will always be some sort of a pain on the person and a burden on the other one. And at some point, the, the secure person will say, well, that's it. Because it ends there. Or the insecure person, which I've been, by the way, I've been both people. <laughs> Uh, the insecure person says, that's it. See, I have actually ended relationships out of insecurity, just so you know. And it's crazy. I, was, I mean, I know this now. I can admit now because I can see it. I mean, I'll even admit it when I see it. Um, out of a misunderstanding of a female and how she is, I have ended a relationship because I didn't want to experience certain things she may do, right? So, if I could go back, I wouldn't change anything because I am who I am, but if I, could, if I did it right, you could say, I would have not ended some relationships like that. There was no need for them to be ended. It was my insecurity that ended that shit. It wasn't, there wasn't a problem. It, my, it was my problem, right? So I think that there should be a way where we check into each other's security and insecurity levels. You know, I don't know how to do it yet, but I just thought this, is, this, this could be an issue. This could be a real fucking big issue. It's kind of an invisible issue, right? Because one of the things is women love to throw this shit out. Women love to throw out, you're just insecure. No, 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 no. I'm not just insecure, okay? I'm logical. And logic tells me that if you do action A, B, that's going to equal C. That dude is going to be D. And then we're all going to be F, fucked. Okay? So I'm not insecure. I can just see what the fuck is happening. If you do A, B comes right afterwards. You want to, let me give you an example. If we're here and there's a dude there and he looks at you and you look and he smiles and you smile, that's A, which is gonna equal B, which is he's gonna increase the smile to the next motion. He's either gonna to move towards you, wave or send a drink or something, okay? That A will equal B. 
When he does action B, it's going to equal C, which is you're going to have to answer it with either more aggression or try to be nice again. If you do C, B, nice, D, he is coming here, and I'm a bitch that has to stand up now and fucking face him. Or I'm going to leave you E, F. Do you see? To you, you didn't want to be rude. To me, you started a battle. Benny, official Benny Benny. To me, you started a battle. Now, when I, oh my God, I got to tell you guys a story. This happened with Electra. Electra, are you on or are you asleep? It's false. They don't give a fuck anymore. Like, dude, it's been two hours. Shut up. It's been two hours. I need to shut up. I will shut up. Okay, let's pretend like they're, they're, they're asleep because I'm not going to wait an hour to talk. Listen to this shit. I want this story. This is a while back, guys. Listen, listen to this shit. This is crazy shit. I, I was at this, I, I go to this, um, it's where I met Hannah, okay? I met Hannah at a tanning salon. At the tanning salon, she had a friend who I was messing around with. That's how it happened, okay? So I go to this tanning salon. So I went to the tanning salon before I knew Hannah. And uh, there was this chick there, pretty hot. We talk a little bit. She was a customer and I talked briefly. And then she left. I left. Later that night, I was at this restaurant with Electra. And what happens? I walk in and I see her. And she's with a guy. And she looks at me. But when she looks at me, I felt whew, something was wrong. I said, well, what the fuck, right? I, I, I still remember that chick. So I did one of these. You know, a little friendly, hey. And she looked down. I'm standing there waiting for the, uh, for the wait uh, to be seated or whatever. And I see from the corner of my eye this. I look, she's doing this. And the dude she's with goes like this. Now I feel the heat. I don't want to say nothing to Electra yet. I'm holding her hand. I look, he looks back at me like this. Looks, looks, looks. Goes like that. They start talking. I'm like, what the fuck could this bitch have said right now? But it doesn't feel right. So, something says to me, you should leave. But then I convince myself, fuck that. Why the fuck would I leave? So we go, we sit down. We sit down here. They sit down over there. Over there. As we're eating, or the food is coming, I see the dude get up. And he starts walking towards the table. I feel it because he looks like he's going a direct line, you know? I'm looking at Electra, I'm talking. He comes up, he stands at the table. He goes, what's going on? I look up now, remember, Electra has no fucking idea what's happening here. I go, what's up? And he goes, you mind if I sit down? I go, sit down. I pull over, I, I move like this, he sits next to me. He sits like this, I never forget this day, man. He goes like this. And he goes, do you and I need to talk? And I go, uh, I don't know, bro, do we need to talk? And he's like, uh, uh, it sounds like we do. The lecture's looking at me like, what the hell? I said, no, I don't think we need to talk, dude. I think I'm, I'm gonna be eating and you need to be eating too. And I look at the lecture and then I snap. I said, no, we need to talk. Uh, I'll be right back. We're going to talk. Go. We're going to talk. <laughs> so we walk out. As we're walking out, I'm looking at his neck. And I know that if I jump on it like this, I can put him to sleep in about two seconds if I squeeze. Like, I literally can put someone, to, maybe, maybe even less if I go. Okay, now, I may accidentally kill him because I've never been in that intense adrenaline. But in Jiu-Jitsu is different. This is going to be, I don't know, this guy's going to stab me. What the fuck's going to happen? So I'm looking at his neck. He's a tall guy. And I just measure it, and I'm like, I can, that's it. But then I, you know, you do a quick thing, like if I go there, then what the fuck's gonna happen? So by the time my thoughts working itself out, we're standing outside. And he goes, um, You tried to talk to my girl earlier? I said, Bro, listen, that's your woman? He said, Yeah. So I'm keeping it very cool. Uh, but, I'm, but I'm feeling the nerves. <laughs> you know, we start feeling like, okay, your hands are okay. Like, you, you feel like you gotta do this. You should start talking to them. You can't just like stand still. <laughs> So I'm, I'm like, so I'm trying to control it, right? And I go, um, I said, that's your woman. I said, I saw her at the tanning salon. He's like, yeah, she told me that you just suspected her. I said, she told you I just suspected her. I said, yeah. I said, did you see my woman in there, bro? I said, that's my girlfriend. 
No, she's not the only one. Did you see her? She's pretty fine, right? I said, your girl's, your girl's fine. I said, and he goes, well, um, I, he's all, I think you need to apologize to her, okay? He's, he's, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I don't know when, when it's going to change in my head, but I know at some point it changes, right? So I just got to just let nature take its course, right? And so I go, listen, bro, you're a man that's a woman. I go, I, I teach this shit. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know your girl. I go, but you didn't see the interaction in there. I go, you're starting trouble not knowing what happened. I go, I did nothing, nothing to your girl that, I, that, I, that would be uh, out of the ordinary because I don't hit on women. And he goes, well, that's not what she said. I looked at him. I said, well, listen, I'm going to go back and eat. He said, I, I, oh. I said, listen, bro, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go back and I'm going to eat. And you're going to go back and you're going to fucking eat. And we're going to have a good night. Here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to stand out here and you're going to keep talking because I'm going to go back in. So if I go and you touch me, I'm going to break your hands. You're not going to fucking touch me. I said, I might fucking clear with you. And he goes, he's kind of moving back. I said, it's not your fault. I get it, right? I get it. They're causing trouble. I said, go have a peaceful night, all right? This is stupid. I don't want to fucking fight over this shit. I didn't do shit to your girlfriend. I said, if your girlfriend had a fucking problem with me saying hi to her, whatever the fuck I said, tell her I'm sorry for fucking saying hi to her. I would have never fucking said hi to her if I knew she was going to be a fucking, a fucking bitch like that. So don't call me. I said, no, it's a fucking bitch, bro. It's a fucking bitch that does this shit. I said, so we're good or not? And he's like, he's like, uh, kind of looks at me. He's like, yeah, well, just, you know, just be cool about it or some shit. I said, okay, whatever. I said, by the way, I got my fucking wallet. I take out a card. It's when I own IMC, right? And it said like, uh, IMC fight and fitness or whatever the fuck it was, right? I give it to him. I said, here's my card. Now, if you want to settle this properly, I go, you have free lessons. You show up and I'll be the one to teach you. And he looks at it like this. And then it, you can see it dawned on him kind of like he hadn't seen me. And he kind of looks up. I said, you have free lessons, okay? Whenever you want. All right, I leave. Dude, I ran into this dude for two weeks. Like, I, I ran into him three times in different places. By the third time, I walked up to him. It was at a breakfast place in Campbell. I walked up. I was laughing. I shook his hand. I said, man, I've ran into you three times since then. I said, you going to come train or not? He's like, no, man, whatever. And then he goes, hey, I want to tell you something. I go, what? He said, it was really cool that you didn't get in a fight with me that night. I said, I don't want to fight you, bro. He said, yeah, but you could have kicked my ass real bad, man. I've looked you up, whatever. I said, of course, but you could have come back. I'm not going to kill you. What are you going to do? I'm going to kick your ass. Then what's going to happen? We live in the same city. Then what are we going to do later? Right? I see you again. You're going to have to run or I have to run. Like, I'm not going to play that game, bro. I said, now we're friends. We're going to come train. And that ended the situation like that. I don't know what I was telling you that, but it was a lot of fun to talk about it. Okay? These stories have to be online. Listen, it's uh, 1224 here. Tomorrow is Monday. I'm going to do a, a thing. What is it called? Uh, read with me. I'm going to read a book tomorrow at 10 p.m. And then uh, I appreciate you guys being here. Now, Game or Die comes out on the 27th. It's my product. It's going to rip. It's going to rip ass. <laughs> is that a good one? It's going to rip ass. And then um, I'll be in L.A. I'll be in Hollywood this week coming up. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'll be there a bunch of days. There's going to be a bunch of stuff I'm doing over there. So if you're in town, if you're over there, you want to come up. Or you want to come see me, just say what's up. It's all good, okay? Send a message on Instagram if you have my number text. Uh, you, you have to understand, I teach people that pay me over there. So sometimes when people show up, I don't want to be rude. So, but I'll tell you, I'll be like, hey, we're eating, come by. Like, have a drink with us or have some food and leave. If you want to pay, that's fine. Some people are paying $1,000, $2,000 to hang out, right? It's not cool to do that. But I do want to meet everybody. I really, really do, okay? All right, that's the way it goes. IMT Nation, baby. Be the best. Fuck the rest. Hope to see everybody.